thank you for sort of coming back to look at this next video on our channel. Please, if you do enjoy what you're watching or you think it's of value, please do the usual subscribe, like, and tick that bell if you want to have further notifications. Now, what I'm doing today is making some syrup. And why am I doing that today? It's the 17th of July, it's the middle of summer. It's because if you've been watching one of my other videos um, that I'm just about to do, Today, I picked up my bees, so hooray! We're finally beekeepers, uh, i.e. we've got bees in our home apiary just out there in the garden. So I'm going to make some syrup. Um, it's uh, just sugar, water, and I'm just going to put a dash, because some people um, advocate putting something to help it so, so you don't get mold or anything growing, but hopefully at this time of year they'll mop it up quickly. What I've got there is just a bit of um, cider vinegar. Now, why cider vinegar? Well, the vinegar is what will help deter uh, mold or anything growing in, in it. But the cider is apples, it's natural. And also, who, I'm sure anybody who's seen apples on the floor that are fermenting, there's wasps and bees and things, they go on it. So it's not gonna do them any harm if uh, we're fermenting, um, but the vinegar is effectively fermented um, apple juice. Um, so, or in this case, the cider. So what have I got here today? I'm making two-in-one sugar um, syrup. Now, two-in-one at this time of year, normally, if, let's say, earlier in the year, um, here in the UK, um, because of the weather conditions, um, the, we, there was actually a warning to beekeepers to say, please check your hives, make sure they've got enough because there hasn't been much in the way of nectar flow because bee, bees haven't been able to get out because it was so wet. So, but that, that would normally have been if you were feeding in that situation, a one kilogram, so it's about 2.2 pounds of sugar to one liter, again, um, sort of like just over two pints of water. So, but what I'm doing here is double the amount of sugar for the same amount of water. Now the feeders, which um, yeah, I've sort of shown you in one of the um, other videos when I was talking through the lot about the long hive, um, that uh, those feeders are four liters. So putting out, it's about just under 10 pints uh, in there. Now I'm gonna make four liters of, of, of water um, in there um, and um, sugar solution uh, in, in, in here. So first of all, what have I got here? Well, bowl just to measure the sugar, which I've got in here. I bought a big bag because ultimately um, we'll get through quite a bit of sugar. Um, yeah, during the year, particularly when we're coming into the autumn and winter to make sure they're boosted up, but uh, depending on how much stores I have. So if I just start this, um, well, I'm gonna just pause all these uh, as we go through because I'm sure you don't need to see me um, just measuring um, sugar. Um, but I'm just gonna keep the video rolling for now. So, so because I'm doing what I am, I want to have four liters, I need to have eight kilos of sugar. So that's just one kilo. So I want to do eight of those. Now I'm probably going to give us some two little, two batches as well. Or maybe even three. So, so these little mugs, it's effectively about four mugs per kilo, um, which is as I said, kilo is about 2.2 pounds of sugar. So, so effectively we're going to be making about a gallon in imperial of, of mix. Oh, that. Now you don't have to be too precise with all of this. Um, it's all pretty approximate and you, you just sort of do what you need to do. Now before we actually sort of got going I actually boiled the good old kettle and I'm just going to pour that in and what I'm going to see is hopefully this will be enough for this to all dissolve. Now I know when I sort of did all of this it was two litres of water so I measured it before I poured it in um, so and then it's literally just if I turn this down and tip this a bit more yeah. I'm just sort of stirring it, you can see it's just gloopy sugar. So it's just a case of just stirring this and this will just gradually dissolve. So because I've got two liters and I've done four kilos of sugar, this will be like one batch or half of what will fit into that feeder. Now, as you can see there, it's all milky, 
as the sugar it hasn't yet dissolved. But as we go on and we keep stirring it, quite simply, it will just get clearer and clearer and then ultimately it'll be completely clear. And that's when you know that it's all been dissolved. Nice and simple, very quick and easy. Now, when do I add the um, cider vinegar? Well, all I'm literally going to do is a, a, a couple of tablespoons full in this, but I'll, I'll do that once it's actually dissolved. I won't do, do that now. Is it important to do that way? Probably not. Um, that's just the way um, I'm going to do it today, and we'll see if it works. But um, I can already s start seeing the, the bottom of um, this pot. Um, it's, so it's not yet all completely dissolved. Now, how long have I been stirring at? About a minute, maybe? And it's nearly all dissolved already. So you can see it can be very, very simple to do. And if you want to, you, as I said, if it's a, just a summer fee because it isn't sufficient um, of a nectar flow happening and the stores are very low in your hive in the middle of the summer, um, then again, you can do this, but just half a sugar. So one kilo, 2.2 um, pounds of honey, uh, of sugar for one liter, again, just over 2.2 uh, pints of um, of water. So, but that's it, yeah. So now that's fully dissolved. How long did that take? How simple is that? So that was about, say, two to three minutes. But of course, we can't feed that to the bees right now, um, as is, because it's just way too hot. So I'm only gonna put a little bit in. There we are, that's all, not, not much at all. And that will be enough. I can smell the vinegar as I've poured it in. But as soon as I've done this, and just given a couple of minutes, and that smell will have gone. It won't deter the bees at all, um, because they like apples anyway, so, but that's it. Now I'm just gonna put that on the side and let it cool, and I'll pour that into the actual feeder um, as and when I need. Now, I'm gonna do this amount now, and um, I will do another batch this afternoon after I've put this in the actual hive, and um, tomorrow I will just go and check the feeder um, because it is late this afternoon. I am going to um, go up and or transfer the bees from the nuke, uh, my nucleus, five frame nucleus into the hive. Ultimately, it's a 20 frame hive. I don't, I'm not gonna feed this to fill all 20 frames of comb, but what I will do is do it so until there's about nine, maybe 10, but if there's a really good flow happening, then I will stop. Um, at the moment, it's, um, as I said, the 17th of July. So lovely, glorious sunshine, um, sunny day um, today. And the outlook for the next week is to be um, uh, glorious. So the bees will be able to get out and about. But um, even so, even if there was a flow today and um, for the next week or so, I would still keep feeding because I need them to build out that comb. And um, so I'm not, planning to really um, do anything for honey this year. It is about growing the bees and making sure they're gonna be a good size and a healthy colony to go through the winter. Um, now our winters here in the UK, where I am just north of London in Hertfordshire, is um, relatively mild um, compared with say Scotland or um, lots of the continent and certainly warmer than the northern parts of the United States and North America, Canada. Um, so from my perspective, I still need to make sure they're going to be well fed. Um, they've got lots of stores happening, but hopefully by the time we get another two months or so going into the winter, most of what they'll have as stores will be honey, nectar, not syrup. But what I do need to do is help them on, uh, on the way uh, to build that comb up so they can actually have enough comb there to store the nectar to get them through the winter. And that's a plan. So yeah, I'll show you later um, when I'm actually putting this into the um, into the hive in the actual feeder. I'll give you a little um, explanation about the feeder that I actually I've chosen to use. Um, there are pros and cons to any feeder, um, but I like this one. It works with the hive that I have. Um, but as I said, today's the first day I've got bees. Yes, delighted. So hopefully now that we've got some bees, we can actually start keeping bees. That means looking after them, making sure they fed if they need to. Earlier you saw me making the syrup, which was then put into the bees when I actually moved them just now. Um, so what I've also got, just out of interest, because I, I don't know, 
is a factometer. So this is quite important because when you do actually, not, not for the syrup, but when you're actually taking honey, you actually want the honey, the water content in the honey to be less than 17%. Well, I just brought it up just out of curiosity, just to see what the water content is of two in one syrup. And all you do is just put a bit of it on there, close the spectrometer, squeeze it in, and then in the direction of the sun, or some of it's bright. And this is just around, having a look, around 27% uh, water content. It's just out of interest. So, but the rest also sh sh just shows you what um, it is in compared with um, honey when you're doing it. Now, nectar when it's harvested depends on the flower and the time of year, if there's been lots of rain and things, but it could be around 80% water, just as a, a, a guide. Uh, we've still got the bees flying around after I put them in. Just going to put some syrup in. So here we are. That's come out, which has been there. Um, you know, so docile, considering it, we have just moved in and I dropped part of the nuke. Now all I'm just going to do is pour in that syrup that we had. So I've got more. Now, so what I try and do here is, one reason I don't like the feed is that tip is that those feeders at tip you end up having to drip some of them either over the frames in the comb or you end up doing it um, you know on the ground away which can attract pests or um, robber bees so by doing that just a yeah, nice amount there a bit more and a tip I was given about these this is a British feeder a UK feeder is just drip some down the side, then they will come up. Because I think that there is some food, they get the drip idea, and then they'll come up and actually do that. Obviously cover it up so that if they do, any do come out, then they're not gonna get drowned in there. And that's it. And because that's a four litre um, thing, then that's gonna be, that's it. So nice and simple, get them ready. As I said, I'll come back in about, um, five minutes or less than that and I'll just sort of um, empty out the rest of those bees.